Hello and welcome to another Learn Learn video. In this video we're going to be looking at two high performance computing scheduling algorithms which are first come first serve and easy backfilling. So these jobs are used to decide on which jobs get executed first when you've got multiple jobs in the job queue and they work in slightly different ways. Okay so let's have a look, let's get started. So the first one we're going to look at is we're going to look at first come first serve. Now this one is one of the simplest algorithms and it literally follows the principle of first come first serve. Whichever task enters the queue first is the first one that's executed. Um, and this is usually implemented in a non-preemptive algorithm, which means that once the processor uh, has allocated space for that job, then it will be run and it cannot be interrupted until it's finished. Uh, doing its CPU burst. Okay, so let's have a look at how that actually works in practice. So imagine we've got a job table here of lots of different processes, lots of different jobs that are going to need to be processed. Um, first of all, just to go through, we've got job numbers. So this indicates the order in which that job has arrived, uh, the time at which it arrives. So um, obviously jobs could arrive at any time. And here we've listed them in order. Uh, how long the job will take to actually process, which is also known as its burst time, and how many CPUs are going to be required and need to be allocated in order to run the job. So we've got this table and let's see how it performs with those jobs. So let's say we've got a um, we've got six processes available in total in our high performance computing uh, system, and let's see how things get done. So let's imagine the first job, it arrives at number one, and this one has a duration of three, so it's going to take three cycles, and it's going to require four CPUs, so three by four in total. Well, at the moment, there's nothing else in the queue, so that gets executed straight away, and you can see it gets put straight in there, which is fine, that's all good. Uh, and then the next job to come along at uh, number two, clock two, is a job that uh, takes four and it requires two CPUs. So again, that one gets put in, happy days. Next one comes along, job number three, and now we've got a bit of a problem because it arrives at number three, but there's no space for it to be executed because all of the available processes are being used. Um, so it just sits there in the queue and it waits. There we go. Now the problem we've got here is it's going to take five CPUs. So here you can say it can't be executed here because there's only four available um, and it can't actually be executed here. And now of course as we're ticking on through time, clock cycle one, two, three and four, some more jobs have been added to the system. Now these are smaller jobs that could theoretically fit in here, but because we're following first come first serve, they're going to have to wait until um, space has been allocated for job three. So there you go, four and five, nothing happens. And it's only when we get to clock cycle six that we can fulfill job number three. There we go. And of course here you can see yet more jobs are beginning to arrive. And again, nothing can be done because now we're waiting for job number four to be executed, which requires two CPUs uh, and only one is available. So then job four will have to wait until cycle eight, at which point we can do job five and job six and start job seven as well. There we go, just popping them all in. Good. And as you can see, they're all being executed in order. And it's just run through, nothing can happen at night because everything's booked up. Number 10, oh, that's quite good. We can fit process eight in there very, uh, very, very easily. And then nine goes in and then finally it goes through to uh, job 10. And that's all 12 of the uh, CPU cycles. Um, and as you can see, actually, it's not really all that efficient because we've got all of these processor gaps here that could have been utilized. So just how long did it take on average? Well, in order to do this, we can do a calculation of what's known as the turnaround time. Uh, and this is the total time that it takes to execute a process from the very moment that it arrives in the system ready uh, until it actually completes its execution. And the way we calculate that is the turnaround time equals the completion time minus the arrival time. 
Uh, and generally, it's the job of a processing schedule algorithm to try and reduce that turnaround time so that uh, system resources are being optimized. Okay, so let's see how that performs with first come first serve. Well, you can see the turnaround times here. So for instance, uh, job number one arrived at number, uh, at number one, finished by number four. So therefore it's got a turnaround of three. Uh, two arrived at two, didn't finish until six. Uh, and you can see all of the others here, like four, five, and six, actually their turnaround time is quite large uh, because they had to do a lot of waiting. So the average turnaround time here uh, for any job is 5.3 processor cycles. Um, so that's quite high. So first come first serve isn't perhaps the most effective algorithm. However, it is quite simple. So that's really uh, quite useful. And it's one of the reasons why it's still used in many systems uh, because it's very simple to implement. Okay, so let's have a look uh, at the alternative or one alternative, which is easy backfilling. So easy backfilling, which stands, as, uh, stands for earliest available start time yielding, uh, is an alternative to first come first serve, kind of like a variant really. It still tries to serve jobs generally in order, but what it does is it looks for opportunities to put smaller jobs in, to backfill smaller jobs into the spaces where the, the larger jobs uh, can't fit, so long as the smaller jobs do not ex uh, delay the execution of the larger jobs, as long as they can fit in without causing any negative impacts on any of the larger jobs that arrived beforehand. Um, so let's see how that works in order. Here we go. So easy backfilling. Again, number one this time works exactly the same as before. It gets put in. Happy days, good stuff. Number two lands in just the same as normal. Um, and that gets put in place just as previously. And we tick through. Again, three can't execute. Um, but now what happens is jobs four and five, the system calculates that because job two is only going to take two processor cycles and therefore isn't going to interfere uh, eventually with the execution of job three, it pops uh, job four in there and it pops job five in there as well. So it fits in perfectly. Um, and then there we go. And now, again, another job has been added, but all of the process slots are, are full now, so nothing can be done. And then, there we go, job, uh, job three can now be executed here at position six. And we've got the another two jobs that are waiting, uh, of which we can fit job number six in there, because it only takes one CPU. And then we move along, more jobs get added to the queue, but these are just smaller jobs. And we can see now that all we do, job seven goes in there to number 12. Uh, there we go, job eight goes in there, fills in the gap, and then job nine and job 10 fill in there as well. Okay, so now you're probably looking at this thinking, well, actually, Previously, it did take 12 processor cycles to complete all of the jobs anyway. So what has changed? Well, as you can see by the table here, you can see that things have sort of moved further to the left, which means overall the time it takes to execute any individual process uh, is probably less. So let's have a look at that. Here we go. Uh, and there you go. You can see it. There's the easy backfilling uh, turnaround time. And you can see with all of these here is the numbers are much, much less. And the average turnaround time here is 3.7. Okay, so just to review these two algorithms, we've got first come first serve, where jobs are executed in the order they arrive. It's pretty simple to implement, but not very efficient scheduling. And then we've got an improved version, which is easy backfilling, where smaller jobs are backfilled into the available slots, as long as they don't slow down the execution of the bigger jobs that we're already waiting. Uh, and that's more efficient than first come first serve. Okay, there you go. Uh, if you've got any questions or any suggestions for videos, then please let me know. Uh, and if you did like the video, then please feel free to like and subscribe. Okay, thank you very much.